Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the 2020 annual reorganization meeting. I ask you to please stand and join me in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. At this time, it is my uh, happy duty to call forth uh, three of our four uh, newly elected board members to the front of the dais so that uh, the oath of office may be administered. I will say that uh, during the ceremony, you are more than welcome to take photos. And immediately after the swearing in, uh, we'll take time for individual family uh, group photos, just to so make sure you have a nice memory. So I'm going to uh, read the oath, and then after which uh, I'd ask each of the uh, elected board members to swear I do. After which, uh, I'd ask you to please sign your oath. Please raise your right hands. I, Edward Scanlon, Linda Downing, Harold Peters, do solemnly affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and to the governments established in the United States and this state under the authority of the people, so help me God. I, Edward Scanlon, Linda Downing, and Harold Peters, do also solemnly affirm that I possess the qualifications prescribed by law for the office of member of a Board of Education, and that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties of that office according to the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations. Congratulations. So I've asked you to please uh, do us a favor. Sign the oath. I will countersign and return a copy to you. At this time, I would invite anyone who wants to uh, take pictures, uh, invite each, each member, have their family come down, take a couple of photos. Uh, I will not be appearing in these photos. I know you want me, but uh, I just can't.
At this time, I'd like to take the roll call of the newly constituted Board of Education. Mr. Scanlon. Here. Mr. Peters. Present. Mrs. McAvoy. Mr. Polino. Present. Mrs. DeSensa. Here. Mr. Riggs. Here. Mrs. Downey. Here. We have a quorum. I now call for nominations for the Office of Board President. When all nominations have been made, a member will move to close nominations and the board president will be elected by a roll call voice vote. Uh, anyone want to put forth anyone as a nominee? I'd like to nominate Linda Downing for president. Second. I'll second it. Are there any other nominations for the office of president? Seeing none, I ask for a motion and a second to close nominations. Motion. Mr. Second. Polino, and second was Mr. Riggs. Roll call vote for election of the board president. Mr. Scanlon. Yes. Mr. Peters. Yes. Mr. Polino. Yes. Ms. DeSensa. Abstain. Mr. Riggs. Yes. Mrs. Downing. Yes. Thank you. Congratulations, Mrs. Downing, board president. Close nominations. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Vote for election of Vice President. Vote for election of Vice President, Mr. Scanlon. Yes. Mr. Peters. Yes. Mr. Polino. Thank you. Yes. Mrs. DeSensa. Uh, yes. Mr. Riggs. Yes, thank you. Mrs. Downing. Yes, definitely. Congratulations, Mr. Riggs. Oh, thank you. Moving on to item H of the agenda, Board Secretary Mr. DeGeorge will deliver the annual required school ethics training to the Board of Education. Yes, I would ask uh, in this very brief presentation if the Board wouldn't mind watching the, uh, the slide deck. Good evening again, everyone. Um, as required by the School Ethics Act, every year the Board of Education, as it is newly constituted, is to undergo um, a training regarding the role of the board and school ethics. So board members are officials of the state of New Jersey, and their power is derived uh, not from us, but from the legislature uh, they serve. They really have no legal status as a board member, except when they're sitting together in a uh, legally constituted meeting. So you ask yourself, what in the world did you get yourself into? So here are the roles of the board members. Not to run the schools, but to make sure that the schools are well, well run. Not, not a very subtle, uh, but very important distinction. They have four roles provide guidance, they create policy, uh, help us with uh, gaining quality instruction by a planning mechanism, providing effective management by employing and evaluating a, uh, an excellent superintendent, which they have done, and provide for communication between the community and the board. So we'll take them very quickly, individually. Every policy that's approved by the board, every action uh, board takes needs to be based on what is best for the education of all underscore students in the district. That's the law. 
They create policies, and we have a policy manual. You'll see uh, many, if not all, of our policies are on our district website. And the authority rests with the body of the board, not the individual board member. Policies are supported by regulations. They are designed to help we administrators implement the policies that the board creates. Uh, they don't require, typically, board approval. We do choose to do that. And they do help provide direction to us on making decisions and uh, establishing procedures for our district personnel. Second role, to ensure that teaching and learning is effective, the board has an important planning obligation. School budget, this is budget season, square in the middle. And the board is responsible for and is in the middle of discussing needs and setting parameters and goals. They already adopted a calendar. Uh, we will hold a public hearing at which they will approve the budget. Curriculum and instruction, the board is required to approve the courses of study, as you know from looking at our agendas, uh, including the textbooks and materials that we use. Uh, the board must be able to demonstrate that it, uh, the approved curriculum will help their students achieve the NJSLS. Planning, strategic planning, we're right in the middle of that too. Uh, we're about to have pretty soon a very big uh, meeting with all of our stakeholders to try to create a vision for the next three to five years for our district. Appraisal, communications, goal setting, leadership, fiscal management, and policy development. They are the board re responsible for appraisal and evaluating of the chief school administrator, Dr. Clark. They are responsible for effective communication between themselves and the community. They have a dual role obviously, because they are uh, representatives of the community in which they live, and they are ambassadors to the community of our school district. Above all, members are responsible to and for all of the students in the schools. Ethics. The school Ethics Act, uh, created in April 1992, it is essential that the conduct of members of boards of education and the administrators hold the respect and the confidence of the people. They must avoid conduct which is in violation of their public trust or which creates a justifiable impression that trust is being violated. There are advisory opinions and ethics complaints. Uh, we're not going to go through any of them, but you're certainly more than uh, welcome to go to the New Jersey School Ethics Commission website to take a look at some of the advisory opinions. Uh, and ethics complaints that have been filed in recent years. If a board member violates the act, the School Ethics Commission may recommend to the Commissioner of Education some sort of reprimand, the censure, suspension, or even removal, depending upon the severity. And the Commission cannot overturn the action of the board, and only the Commissioner of Education can do that. Volunteerism, that is the, uh, the opinions, the advisory opinions 15 through 18, generally speaking, and, and we're speaking in general broad terms, members may volunteer for activities that support children, including becoming a PTA president. Members should refrain, however, from certain activities based on the degree of involvement with students and staff, depending upon the position that they are in. For example, and for a limited example, uh, it is acceptable for a non-executive in a district to volunteer. Uh, it is not acceptable for someone to supervise, uh, manage, or direct any school personnel and or the funds related to a student activity or a volunteer activity. Conflicts of interest. A board member must recuse him or herself uh, if there is a benefit to that board member as a school official or that board member's immediate family primarily, but not limited to if the board member has a business interest in the item being voted upon, uh, they cannot use their position to secure unwanted, unwarranted privileges or advantages, they cannot be involved financially in the district, uh, they cannot receive any gifts or favors, there will be no personal involvement that creates a benefit to the board member, and uh, service or employment that may prejudice independent judgment. So. This is typically a no vote and no discussion scenario for board members in this position. Who qualifies as a relative? 
this is something that's constantly changing throughout the school ethics uh, commission community. Typically speaking, if a board member has a spouse or a civil union or domestic partner who works in the district, uh, a parent or step parent, well, you could read the rest. It, it just stands to reason that these folks, whether related to the school official or spouse, partner by blood, marriage, or adoption. Family members working in our district or in another district may also cause conflicts of interest in personnel matters and negotiations. So in these cases, and we talk about conflicts all the time with each other, if there is some uh, potential conflict or area where we feel a board member may be conflicted, we will check with our board attorney for a decision. Hiring and nepotism, districts may not hire relatives of board members or the chief school administrator. Uh, they may not, chief school administrator may not recommend a relative and district administrators may not exercise direct or indirect authority over a relative of the administrator. No exceptions. Collective bargaining. So if you are uh, a spouse, a board member themselves, a child, relative, and you work in the district, that board member may not participate in negotiations, and that board member may not vote to ratify any contracts. If the board member, spouse, or a dependent child works in another district, they may not participate in collective bargaining, but however, they may vote to ratify a contract. If the child of a, uh, or relative of a board member works out of the district, you may participate in negotiations and vote to ratify a contract. If a board member's relative is supervised by employees in a group, uh, even if not in the unit, sometimes it is best for appearance that a board member absent or recuse themselves from voting on a certain issue and you've seen that uh, in our board meetings. This is new, a new advisory opinion. Endorsement of a candidate by a local or statewide union does not create a per se, or that is in fact future conflict unless a financial contribution is given to the candidate. Interview committee, so if the district is interviewing for new employees, advisory opinion 3115 says that board members uh, involvement in interviews for positions other than superintendent is not encouraged. There are exceptions in narrow circumstances um, subject to approval of Dr. Clark in accordance with advisory opinion 412. So if one or two board members, administrative staff, coordinates participation, observations and assessments upon the uh, chief school administrator's recommendation. And under no circumstances is any board member regardless of status to participate in exit interviews of outgoing employees. That is all I have. Um, thank you very much for your kind attention and I uh, ask the board to please resume its seat. George, we need to sign this acknowledgement of receipt and pass it over to you after we've signed it, correct? Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you. I was just about to say that there is for each uh, member of the dais, including we administrators on the dais this evening, there is a uh, code of ethics acknowledgement for each of you. I'd ask you please at some point before we leave this evening to sign and pass that to me. Thank you, Mrs. Downey. You're welcome. Okay, so now we're on item two, combined statement of results of 2019. Do you want to say anything, Mr. DeGeorge, about that? Yes, ma'am, I do. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, these are uh, standard, but by no means uh, trite resolutions that a Board of Education is asked to approve at its annual reorganization meeting. To resolve itself to abide by the Code of Ethics, as previously explained, uh, to adopt formally the combined statement of results of the election in uh, November of 2019 to govern itself at meetings to the extent permissible by parliamentary law to adopt all 
previously uh, recognized and adopted board policies and regulations, and to adopt a regular schedule of meetings, inclusive of the reorganization meeting for a year from now. So yeah, Mrs. Downing, I appreciate the opportunity. Okay, um, and item J on our agenda is the list of committees. Um, just so the board knows, Mr. Riggs and I met, and we were contemplating forming four different committees um, to broaden our communication between each other and to spread out um, our experience with some people that have different experiences in the different areas. <clears throat> However, our board policy states that we have three committees, so we couldn't do that. So um, then we had to go back to the original three super committees. <clears throat> so that's listed on page six of six. So could I have a motion to approve um, items? Motion for item I, um, resolutions one okay. through five. Second. Roll call. Yes, ma'am. Um, Mr. Scanlon. Yes. Mr. Peters. Yes. Mr. Polino. Yes. Mrs. DeSensa. Yes, on all except a, a nay on item four. Mr. Riggs. Yes. Mrs. Downing. Yes. Thank you. Motions carry. Okay, at this time, uh, public comments. If anyone has a comment, please raise your hand, state your name and address. Mr. Rizzoli. Rizzoli, sorry. George, right? Yes, sir. We're happy to do it. Yep. Another question. I use up my five minute time. It's open to the floor, correct? You have to ask anybody. If no one else is on the floor, I get another time here. That's correct. I'm uh, Tony Rizzoli from Forked River. I'm a paying member of the peanut gallery. Uh, my purpose here tonight to come to this particular meeting uh, is because we have a new group. And I'm very hopeful as a new group that we have some new ideas. Hopeful as a new group that we look to change some of our ways of doing the everyday business that has been happening in this district and reconstitute and recreate some of the things that have happened in the past for better performance in the future. Namely academics, which I think we, we have a long way to go, but more concentration is needed. And the other thing is, is communication with the public and transparency of this board. Um, in reference to that, I have a couple of questions. If Mr. DeGeorge or the board newly elected board president would like to ask, answer the question, how many attorneys do we use in the Lacey School District during the normal year? How many different firms? Well, we have three firms. Mr. DeGeorge, do have the... And what's their individual functions and purpose sure. of each firm? There is a uh, one board attorney, general board counsel, um, Stein and Subsey. There is a... Um, Personnel Council, uh, Cleary Jacoby, and there is, that's primarily for personnel matters and negotiations, collective bargaining, and there is a special ed attorney for uh, due process, if there are any uh, situations, and that is uh, Elizabeth Machado and company. Okay. Um, is it mandated that there be more than one group or firm uh, under state law? Not that I'm aware of, no. So we can have one firm accomplish all those different functions? Yes. I say that because that's what has happened uh, in the past, yes. Okay. That's one of the reasons I'm coming to this particular meeting. I have concerns about the fact that we use three attorney firms for three different purposes. I think there could be a, a, a rather large cost saving if we look to change firms so that we have one firm handling all three of those in 
particular subject matter. And as a new board, with a fresh start and a fresh beginning and a fresh outlook, I bring it to you now rather than later. You, you in the past have had attorneys sit on that dais. They are not board members, okay? But they have been up here and they have answered me, they have answered other people in the public in questions that they have brought up, okay? And it seems rather funny to me, and again, I'm here because tonight is the night that it's fresh on your mind, when it comes to that particular video and conflicts of interest. Under 18A, semicolon 12-24, you have so many limitations. So what's a conflict of interest? What you can do, what you can't do. Not one of those addresses what the attorney can do. Not one of those addresses what the attorney can say. Not one of those puts any limitations on what his power or her power is in dealing with the public in dealing with this board. I have concerns because I really feel in the past there have been incidents, and I'll be specific. The situation with the boys who were at the gun, at the gun, uh, the gun range. Are we not in litigation? No comment. That's a yes or a no. It's, re it's really a no comment right now. Right okay. Now. The situation with Mr. Giordano, I personally think Mr. Giordano was wrong in the position that he took. In, in uh, 30 what seconds, was forward. sir. 30 seconds. Okay. It's my personal opinion. Um, I, think he, I think in both instances our attorney gave poor advice, and it's costing the taxpayers additional money. I don't think that the taxpayer in this town should pick, pick up the tab for poor advice. If these two litigations, or if there is two litigations, sir, and they come uh, back. It's time, sir. Sorry. Mr. Rossi, state your name and address, please. <clears throat> Good evening, Gavin Rossi, Fork and River, New Jersey. Uh, I want to begin by thanking Mr. DeGeorge for uh, an informative presentation uh, with respect to school ethics. And uh, I, I am hopeful that as we begin the new year, uh, the members of this body will take ethics very seriously. Um, to address some of the concerns that were raised by Mr. Rizzoli with respect to uh, the conduct of uh, board attorneys, uh, when I last addressed this board, I pledged in December that I would get to the bottom of this gross misuse of taxpayer funds to investigate political opponents at the behest of uh, certain factions of this board. And uh, what we found already is really starting to take on a life of its own. And I will say at the outset, I am profoundly disturbed uh, by the conduct of former board president Giordano and the board attorney in this matter. Um, we saw in their response to uh, my ethics complaint that the reason, you know, we'll take him at his word, the reason why I was investigated during the campaign by the board attorney was um, my status as a journalist and having made OPA requests. That is First Amendment protected activity. That is activity that is protected under New Jersey state law, and it is not a legitimate basis to expend taxpayer funds to investigate somebody who is a private citizen running for office. Uh, that is not a prudent use of taxpayer dollars. Um, it is not appropriate to be having the board attorney serve the private political interests of board members, and uh, that is something that is beyond the scope. It has nothing to do with policy making, planning, appraisal, any of the roles of the board uh, as a body politic governing the operation of the schools. Um, secondly, you know, it, it appears from my observations as a member of the public that uh, this board is targeting, you know, certain factions of this board are targeting Ms. Desenza for supporting my team during the campaign. Again, First Amendment, freedom of association, and uh, I think it speaks volumes 
that um, they chose to target Ms. Desenza for speaking of the conflicts of interest, of which are numerous. You have individuals collecting pensions with ties to education, individuals that have relatives or have passed employment in the schools and are precluded from voting on matters, and uh, those were all legitimate things to point out during the campaign. Uh, at this point, I will say I look forward to the resolution of uh, these various complaints with the Ethics Commission. We fully intend to follow up on this, and I certainly hope that in the new year um, we will be more prudent with the expenditures of the board attorney um, and not using them him for superfluous tasks such as that. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. Is coming back? Is there anyone else that has a comment? I didn't see any other hands, so, okay. As I was saying, <clears throat> um, words were said at the, the gun meeting that it was a process, that's a quote. And then at this latest meeting, the same language or verbiage was, it's a process. Well, after the end of the process, if the final conclusion is that the advice that was given by the attorney was improper, that's poor work performance. And what poor work performance, as an employer, you either counsel your employee, by the way, the attorney is on retainer. He is not an employee of the district, correct? Um, it's not retainer, uh, per se. There's no money paid in advance. It's billed on an hourly basis. Time Do they get a pension? No. No, sir. They are not employees. No attorneys that have ever worked for the district get pensions. That's a different question. Okay. Um, but in current iteration, the board attorney or attorneys in this case are not employees, but rather contractors. Okay. So they are not. Uh, Can they qualify for a pension? No, sir. Um, no? No. Okay. Um, so what I'm saying is if you have a poor employee, you take action. If they're not an employee, they're on the contract, and they're performing poorly, you replace them. Keep it in mind as a new board. Be open-minded. That's all I'm saying to that. That ends that part of my question is because there's a lot of money going out of this board to that family of one of the attorneys. Um, I have a question for our superintendent. Ms. Clark, did we ever ask the state the reasons that they didn't give us the over 600000 Yes, we did. Did we get an answer? Yes, we did. Did you make the answer public to the public? No. Why? Because we haven't had an opportunity to discuss that response with the board. Okay. Your intention is then to discuss it with this new board and to make it public on the website or to put out a separate statement or just to read it at the meeting? I haven't decided yet. You haven't decided. But there will be answers as to why, Absolutely. okay? Because I did notice in some other school districts in the state that they had money denied. It was reported by the school district. Uh, as a matter of fact, in one of the school districts, in trying to recover that money, they had a referendum. And as part of the referendum, they brought the public in prior to the referendum to show them specifically why they needed that money, which I communicated to you, which I thought was a very good idea if it ever got to that point. If you want that money, justify it to the public. Right, okay? and you said something very important, if it ever got to that point. If it ever got to that point. Correct. Which, there may be some people on this board now with a new outlook who may be looking at, well, we can't get the money through taxes, maybe we have to go through a referendum. But if you do, make it as open to the public as possible and transparent as possible. Thank you very much for your time. That's Can I ask a point of order, uh, Ms. Rizzoli? I'm, I'm not trying to be picky, but as a, as a point of order, uh, it's Dr. Clark. Uh, oh, I, Dr. If, you, if you, yeah, I, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, we'll move on to board comments. Let's start with Mr. Peters. Would you like to start? Yeah, tonight. Just uh, congratulations and everything to everyone. Uh, Mr. Rizzoli, I have one statement about, about your question regarding the attorney. Um, you mentioned we have three attorneys for, we mentioned we have three different attorneys for three different subjects, but honestly, that's what they major in. Would you go to a, 
uh, eye doctor if your knee hurt. I mean, that's what they specialize in. This could cost us a lot more money in the outcome using the wrong attorney for the wrong subject. And that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Peters. Uh, Mrs. Desenza? Thank you. Um, welcome to our new board member, Mr. Scanlon. Longtime residents may recall that Mr. Scanlon has previously served as a township committeeman and mayor back in the 90s. And welcome back to Mrs. McAvoy, who couldn't be with us tonight, and Mrs. Downing. Um, that was a very interesting oath just recited to uphold the, the Constitution of the State of New Jersey and the Constitution of the United States. That's very important. Many things have happened as we begin this new year and new decade. Thank you for the committee assignment to finance. I really appreciate being allowed to continue on the finance committee. Thank you also for the state and county uh, alternate delegate assignments. Some may wonder why I abstained on the board president vote. It's because no one contacted me for the past two months to discuss it. And trust me, it was discussed. Last year, I was in the loop. This year, I'm out of the loop. I'm not complaining, just informing. At this time, I would like to volunteer for LTASA Negotiations Committee. I already submitted a request in writing, but I haven't heard from anyone. I have training and experience with two previous union negotiations, and I have no conflicts. My no vote pertaining to policy and bylaws, which was item four. Some original bylaws need updating, and one needs to be added. I've been asking for a review of a proposed negotiations committee policy for nearly a year now. The research has been done. And the second item that I have an issue with is the sign for the cheese sandwiches for lunch balances above $25. This nearly needs to be updated, and could that issue please be put on the policy agenda? Policy 8550 deals with lunch balances. It would really be nice to see the cheese sandwich signs go away, if at all possible. Will it be a happy new year? I'm not so sure yet. I've been palcheskied, and only Ms. Downing can appreciate that term. The open public records law has allowed me to locate some very significant documentation that the former board president unilaterally sought to file ethics charges against me, and now I have them. My complaint arrived in the mail on January 2nd. Thank you all. Six complainants are noted on docket number C75-19. Mr. Giordano, Mr. Polino, Ms. Downing, Mr. Peters, Mr. Mirandi, and Ms. McAvoy. I want to ask Ms. Downing, today marks your 10th term of office, your 29th year of service. Were you at any point in time aware that I was being investigated for possible ethics charges? Did you give verbal permission to Mr. Giordano to call Mr. Subsey? On November 6th. Why I, I don't think that is a, uh, a topic that anyone could really make a comment on because it's an ongoing issue. I'm just asking. I'm just putting it out there. Because member conduct is not a confidential topic since we are not employees. This board is seven people. I'm not going to hide the fact that I have an ethics complaint ready to go and I'm just waiting for a few more exhibits to attach. I could go through the other board members, but I'll skip that now since uh, Mr. DeGeorge has declined. Um, there has been a cost of over $5,000 to the taxpayers. And may I remind certain people your election flyer, which is attached to the complaint, promised to manage the school budget and tax dollars responsibly. Apparently, your definitions are a little different when it comes to persecuting a fellow board member, but I accept that. The voters put us here. And they don't elect us to be best friends. They elect us to public service. Unfortunately, I don't fall in line. I don't conform. I was not friendly with anyone on this board before I got elected. I am not Lacey born and raised. I am from New York, a true outsider. Maybe I'm a bad person. I don't know. Am I watching the tax dollars too carefully? I don't know. I don't use social media for a reason, but other people do. And I've been accused of making um, comments on Facebook, and I have never made a Facebook comment in my life. I'm very upset about what happened, but I accept it. And I was just wondering, does everyone here know that I have a criminal justice degree, and I've taken courses in investigation, interrogation, and forensics? I'm not shy, and I don't mind discussing this issue. I've been accused of micromanagement apparently reading the monthly vouchers before approving millions of dollars in bills every month. It's my duty and my responsibility. 
This will be continued on Tuesday, January 21st. The agenda meetings at 6 p.m. The public meeting follows at 7 p.m. And by the way, the DOE Ethics Committee meets during the day on the fourth Tuesday of the month at 100 Riverview Plaza, Trenton. Everyone mark your calendars because we're going to be spending a lot of time there. Thank you. Mr. Sessenza, number one, there is no uh, members assigned to negotiations at a, as of now. Okay, thank because you. Because we're not negotiating right now, but we will be. They did ask. So, no, so I will not be assigning anyone yet. Okay. Number two, the board policy. Um, we, as I said before, um, there were committees formed that Mr. Riggs and I sat to get these committees together and because of the board policy, but that is something that's coming up at board policy when you have the meeting, when they have the meeting, and I'm sure they will add that to you as well. Well, that's precisely that. what I'm asking for that to be yeah. considered. Thank you. And as far as being micromanaging, I don't know what you're referring to, but, um, you know, I, I was, I'm hoping that this year that we can work as a board, all seven of us. That's all I've ever wanted. Well, so have I and so many of the board members here. So let's try to move on and have a good year. Mr. Polino. Board members, attorney board members. Is it there? Why there? Yeah. You have to be closer. I don't want to be closer. <laughs> Just want to wish everybody a happy new year, a healthy one. Looking forward to uh, working with everybody. And that's it. Thank you, Mr. Pino. Who's next? This, Mr. Scanlon. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'd like to wish everybody a happy new year. I'd like to. First of all, thank my friends and family for supporting my campaign, especially my wife, Heather, who is looking at me now saying, not me. <laughs> Seriously, though, i just like to thank the voters also for putting their trust in me, and I can only promise to do my best. Uh, and just one minor correction, Mrs. DeSenza, it was in the 70s, not the 90s, that I was on the committee. Thank you. And um, your wife knows clearly what this entails since she right. sat on the board back in the 70s? 80s. 80s. Well, this is a unique situation. <laughs> the first time we've had a husband and wife sit on the board. Uh-huh. Mr. Riggs. Uh, thank you, President Downing. Um, congratulations, Mr. Scanlon, uh, for your newly appointed position. Congratulations, everyone else, Skip, for coming back. Frank, everyone else that's up here. Um, I'd like to echo just a couple things that were said up here. Um, so when I first came on, I didn't know what was going on. By the second year, I'd say we got to a point where we were clocking along almost to the point of, I don't know if we were high functioning yet, but we were getting there with our board retreat and everything. Um, the last thing I want to see is all that get washed away. Um, we have to remember that we are up here for a purpose. Um, egos, personalities, all that stuff aside, you guys saw here up on the board what we're really here for. If we're not here after um, looking after all the students in the, in the district, then what are we really doing up here? So going forward, I know uh, everyone's going to throw a couple more eggs before this is all done, but got to remember we're all friends and we got to at least work together as some kind of cohesive team once it all comes down to it. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Riggs. And very uh, quickly, I want to congratulate Mr. Scanlon and welcome him to our board. Um, congratulate Mr. Peters. Mrs. McAvoy is away right now, so she's not here. Um, Mr. Riggs, it's great to have you, you and I working together uh, for this board at Downing. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank Mr. George and uh, the administration, Dr. Clark, uh, Mr. Decker, for getting this organized tonight so we can move on. At that point, I'd like a motion to adjourn this meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.